This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Use promo code OLIVE for 20% off and free shipping off any products on their website. Link in the description. Enjoy the video. I get clowned mercilessly for how early I fall asleep, but I got a good story to tell today, and if you're willing to stay up with me, I'll stay up for you guys, because this game, while meaningless, is a pretty good one. The 1993 Phillies were weird. They were coming off a 70 and 92 finish in 1992, and they weren't exactly favorites to take home the NL East. But, led by the stars of Darren Dalton, John Crook, Lenny Dykstra, and Kurt Schilling, the team was shaggy, unkempt, and dirty, and really endearing to their Philadelphia faithful. What the team lacked in polished talent, they thrived in attitude. They jumped out in first place on the first day of the season and only relinquished that spot once throughout the entire season. 1993 would be Philadelphia's first winning season since 1986 and their first playoff off appearance since 1983. They had a star player in basically every category, and each of those guys came with their own special attitude towards the game. Simply put, they were very fun to watch. On the other side of things were these guys. The San Diego Padres were a mess. Ownership had just shed a lot of talent to save costs, and they were headed into the 1993 season with virtually no expectations. With just one playoff appearance since their first season in 1969, hopes were not high for the Padres back in 1993, aside from their star outfield, made up of Tony Gwynn, Phil Plantier, and Derek Bell. They had a solid starting pitcher in Andy Bennis and a young Gary Sheffield with loads of potential, but not much else to go on. Though they would find some success success in the playoffs down the line, in 1993 they were still a little bit away. They were an 100 game loser, finished 7th in the NL West, and their team leading stats, while impressive, were ultimately meaningless. This takes us to July 2nd, 1993, where the Phillies are hosting the Padres for a double header and game 1 ends at 1am. The Padres take this game 5-2, and now the Phillies, who are hosting the Padres, have lost 5 of their last 6, and their lead in the divisional race is slimming. Luckily for them, the Padres, who just won, had lost 10 of their last 12, so one of these team skits has to end sooner or later. The Padres and Phillies began playing baseball at 4.44 p.m. on this day, and they wouldn't finish until 12 hours later. Jose De Leon takes the bump for Game 2, which starts at 1.30 a.m. He's usually a relief pitcher, but he's been thrown into action here. Mm. Let's clean this up. Let's get a scoreboard up. Let's make it look a little bit nicer for you guys. We're going to be here for a while. It's a clean first, so we're going to jump right to the second inning. Now, naturally, we're playing a game at 1.30 a.m., so the players are kind of tired. Todd Pratt is going to reach on an error after this nice play by Craig Shipley, dug out by Fred McGriff, who simply did not step on the bag. Shipley somehow gets the error, but later, Andy Bennis escapes the jam, so no harm, no foul. Just get ready, guys. You're going to see a lot of sloppy baseball in this video. Let's go to the top of the third now. Jose De Leon starts the frame by hitting opposing pitcher Andy Bennis with a 2 a.m. speed curveball and gets an ear load from the Philly faithful. That ball just absolutely got away from De Leon. He certainly didn't mean to hit Bennis. Oh, yeah. Philly fans definitely hung around after that tough loss, and they're going to be around for the whole game doing a lot of weird stuff. De Leon follows that hit by pitch by a wild pitch, and then gives up this ground ball to Kim Batiste, who promptly boots it. He's a fielding specialist, after all. So De Leon now has to try to get a fourth out in the inning, but Craig Shipley is going to give him a hard time making up for his own error and putting that one over the fence for a three-run home run. And the Padres lead it 3 to nothing on three unearned runs. It's 2 a.m., Philly fans are cranky, and Andy Bennis is throwing pitches at the backstop, scaring the grounds crew. What if anybody in the ground crew was taking a little nap just then? That will come up. <laughs> Catcher Kevin Higgins decides to let everybody know that he's tired too and drops a fastball right down the middle. This is just what 2 a.m. baseball looks like. Jose De Leon gets cracking again and gives up a rocket double to Fred McGriff, who made the error in the second inning. He decides one ain't enough, and Phil Plantier rocks his own double to center field, and Jim Eisenreich does his best attempt to try and rob this thing, only to have it nearly bounce off the top of his head, bringing home another run for the lowly San Diego Padres. Fred McGriff probably shouldn't have even scored, but thanks to this fielding miscue by Ruben Amaro, he came all the way around. Phillies and announcers already sound like they've had enough. The best thing that can happen to the Phillies right here is for it to rain. <laughs> and they, hard. They tell us it's not going to rain anymore tonight. Clouds just can't hold any more water. Get somebody up there with buckets then. I can't really blame them, and then, as if things couldn't get worse, a slow infield grounder to Ricky Jordan is flipped to Jose De Leon, except it's flipped past him, and that brings home another run on the Phillies' second error of the game so far. De Leon, who's only allowed one earned run so far, finally gets the strikeout to end the inning as Andy Bennis does his best ice skating impression, and the top of the fourth comes to a merciful end for the Phillies. Here's something fun. The ball girl had to hang out too, right? There's a baseball game going on. She snares this liner down the left field line and flips it to a fan and gets a high five. 
five. The clock strikes 2.30 a.m. at this point, but hey, Philly fans are still hanging around hoping to see a good ball game, so props to them. Jim Eisenreich rewards them with an RBI single in the bottom of the fourth to get the Phillies on the board at last. It's five to one. As if this game couldn't get sloppy and upside down enough, Jose De Leon comes back from his horrible fourth inning and throws just seven pitches in the top of the fifth for a 1-2-3 scoreless frame to keep it 5-1. Not bad for a bullpen guy. This would turn out to give the Phillies the jolt they needed in this game. I don't think I've ever seen a batter choke up on a bat more than Mickey Morandini, and he fouls this one off to the left side, where a Phillies fan decks a bunch of steel chairs just to grab it. Naturally, the fanatic comes over to make sure everyone's alright and shows him who's boss. Also, that happens. The choke up god Mickey Morandini is going to double down the right field line to put two runners on for a big moment for first baseman Ricky Jordan. A lot of anticipation is building in the stadium. It's a big moment here for Philly. What? A, a blackout? After all that, are you. Oh. Guys, look, we're back. As if right on cue, Ricky Jordan blasts that Annie Bennis fastball right over the left field wall, pretty much directly where Craig Shipley hit his, and suddenly, it's a 5-4 game in the fifth inning. Naturally, the Philly fanatic is going crazy with the fans who decided to hang out. Reliever David West takes over for Jose De Leon in the top of the six, and things start getting a little frisky. Red Sox organization playing in Paul Tucker. certain terms. This time of the night you can hear almost every word down there. Might have been Kurt Schilling. Phillies fans were a different breed to begin with, but 2.30 a.m. Phillies fans just hit different. The Phillies escape the top of the six unscathed. The fans obviously aren't done yet. This one really wants you to know that it was a dirt ball. Natives are restless here tonight. I, I just love how crystal clear you can hear them. Naturally, Todd Pratt flings his bat, and Andy Bennis induces a ground ball from Kim Batiste, gets the force out, and we're through six. The seventh opens up with Philly Fanatic riding an ATV through the stands, because there are no laws in 3 a.m. baseball. David West finishes another clean inning with this infield pop-up, and for some reason, there are children in the stadium. I don't know why or how you could sleep with Philly fans screaming around you. Tim Tuffle, who should only be wearing a Mets uniform, comes in to play first base, and it's never explained why. And Lenny Dykstra gets his first taste of action since game one. Bennis finishes seven strong by getting Dykstra to fly out and we're still at a 5-4 game. The Philly Fanatic gets back at it with his entertainer job. He's the one keeping fans in the seats if we're being real right now. No offense to Derek Bell, but you can literally see giant bags under his eyes at this point. And if you're as sleepy as him, it's hard to hit a Larry Anderson 90 mile per hour fastball. So we go to the bottom of the eighth at 3 a.m. in the morning. The Phillies finally get something cooking in the bottom of the eighth with a walk to Dave Hollins and then another walk to Pete Inca Villia. This brings up aforementioned RBI machine Darren Dalton with two outs and a chance to tie the game. He rips a single to right field off Gene Harris and as fate would have it, this game is tied heading into the ninth inning. And I think we all know what's coming for a game that's currently taking place at four in the morning. Mitch Williams comes into the game in the ninth inning and we are not going to talk about what he did in the World Series. We're not going to talk about it. We're not. Williams gets two outs but he lets a runner reach third, setting up a big spot for pinch hitting Juan Gutierrez. He gets ahead 0-2 on this borderline strike. Then, he throws the exact same pitch, which is called a ball. Thanks, Blue. He gets him swinging right after on high cheese to send the game tied to the bottom of the ninth. And you wouldn't believe who's coming into pitch for the Padres. Pitching for the Friars is none other than Trevor Hoffman, freshly flipped from the Florida Marlins, making just his fourth appearance for San Diego. He's had a rough go of it so far, with three innings pitched and six earned runs allowed over three appearances. And he doesn't get off to an encouraging start here, allowing an opposite field double to Mariano Duncan to start the frame. After intentionally walking Mickey Morandini, striking out rookie Jordan and inducing a flyout, Hoffman squares off against Pete Incavilia. Hoffman throws a wild pitch allowing the runners to advance, setting up a huge second and third situation with the Phillies poised to walk it off, and then he throws another wild pitch right after, but pinch runner Tommy Green, who is a starting pitcher, gets tossed out at home and somehow, some way, this game heads to extras past 4 a.m. in the morning. Respect to the umpires for getting the call right instead of just calling him safe so they could go home, but damn. All right. On to the 10th. And Mitch Williams has to work another inning. 
That was easily the best strike call I've heard all game. Luckily for the Phils, Mitch Williams stays fresh, throws his second inning of relief, and gets a 1-2-3 top of the 10th going. And honestly, I'm glad that they didn't win on that wild pitch. You'll see why in a second. And Cavillia, who had the bat taken out of his hands in the 9th, draws a walk to start the bottom of the 10th. Jim Eisenreich follows with a single to right field, and the Phillies are poised to take this thing home. Especially considering that they have their RBI machine, Darren Dalton, coming right up. But Hoffman stays composed and gets a much-needed strikeout. This brings up none other than relief pitcher Mitch Williams, MVP of the game. That's a base hit. In Cavillia is going to score, and the Phillies win the game on a base hit by Mitch Williams, 6-5. to five. What a comeback win by the Phillies in an unbelievable game and an unbelievable night and morning. A bizarro game that ended at 4.41 a.m. needed an ending like that. The Phillies started a winning streak after this huge win, you know, once they got some rest, and carried that all the way to win the National League East crown and eventually appear in the World Series alongside the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty tired after that one. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time.